on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. We're talking to New York Times national security reporter Scott Shane. His front page article headline, No Morsel to a Minuscule for All Consuming NSA. Can you talk about some of the programs that you outline, from Polar Breeze to Dish Fire to the NSA's SNAC, Social Network Analysis Collaboration Knowledge Services? Scott. Well, one of the things that you uh, find out going through these documents is, at first, they're kind of baffling, because NSA, like most intelligence agencies, uh, talks about everything in terms of code words. So every program has a code name, and usually the code name reveals nothing about the, the program. Uh, and so it takes a long time. It's sort of lear like learning another language. It takes a long time to make sense out of any of this. Uh, Dishfire, it turns out, is a program, it's actually a database where uh, text messages sent by cell phones around the world are uh, uh, collected and put into this Dishfire database. Um, from the bits and pieces you can pick up from the documents, it appears to contain text messages in many languages going back for many years. And uh, there, there are documents that specifically say it's useful for uh, going back in time. If you find someone who uh, turns up of interest, somebody who you think might be a suspected terrorist or somebody involved in the nuclear weapons trade, or, or perhaps a, you know, a Chinese diplomat of interest, um, you can go back at NSA into this Dishfire database and, and uh, run some numbers through it and maybe come up with some text messages sent by that person in the past. Um, Polar Breeze is just mentioned in one document. It's, it, it's a... Uh, it's a, a method by which somebody who is uh, an American agent who is using, appears to be using perhaps a, a phone in a, an Internet cafe may, in fact, be uh, sort of sucking out the, the contents or monitoring the, the exchanges on a nearby computer. Uh, so that there are just hundreds and hundreds of these programs under various code names, and uh, they're you know, they've all remained uh, pretty much secret until Edward Snowden revealed all these documents starting last summer. Scott Chain, a TAO, the Tailored Access Operations, where the NSA, a division of the NSA, breaks into computers around the world, sometimes leaving spy where uh, after they leave. I mean, that, that is uh, clearly a division of NSA that's increasingly important. Uh, when you think about what's happened to NSA, uh, as I mentioned in the article, CIA human spying has really not changed over the years. Uh, you try to recruit somebody to, to spy uh, at the CIA, just as, as people did hundreds, hundreds of years ago. But NSA, of course, has been transformed uh, along with the kind of information revolution of the last 20 years, the rise of the Internet, the advance of email, uh, the, the proliferation of personal computers and most recently the proliferation of smartphones. So TAO, Tailored Access Operations, uh, they break into these computers around the world. They basically are very, very skilled hackers. And they, <coughs> excuse me, they, <clears throat> they break in and steal secrets from computers. They also, uh, you know, plant Trojan software on computers, uh, just, just like any hackers. But in a very organized fashion, many countries, of course, the Chinese are very good at this, uh, are doing this these days. They seem to be, um, I'd say, an increasingly important um, sort of method or, or division of collection uh, for, for the NSA. There, we also discovered a, uh, a branch of TAO called Transgression. And uh, the Transgression team does something quite interesting. They look for other countries or other hackers around the world that are breaking into computers that are of interest to NSA. And then they essentially follow those hackers in to the target computers. Uh, so it's, it's a strange, uh, it's, it's kind of like uh, burglars who go around the neighborhood looking for open windows and doors that the burglars ahead of them have left and then go in through those open windows and doors. And that's sort of a... Um, a twofer for the NSA because they learn about the the other countries' hacking capabilities, and they uh, get to collect information from the target computers in in the third country.
Scott Chain, after you published your piece, WikiLeaks tweeted, quote, uh, NY Times does NSA spoiler story gutting over a dozen serious stories from rivals justifies using Inman. The last part of that tweet refers to former NSA chief Bobby Inman. In your article, you quote his recommendation to his colleagues at the NSA who are embroiled in the spying scandal, saying, this is what Inman said, my advice would be to take everything you think Snowden has and get it out yourself. It would certainly be a shock to the agency. But bad news doesn't get better with age. The sooner they get it out and put it behind them, the faster they can begin to rebuild. Respond to both parts, what WikiLeaks said about the piece and what Inman said about just get it all out now. Well, um, to, to start with Bobby Inman, he was uh, NSA director from 1977 to 1981. One of the was that he was NSA director after the Senate's Church Committee revealed um, what, what many people certainly considered to be abuses by NSA back in the mid-70s. That was when thousands of Americans were on NSA watch lists, including um, civil rights activists, anti-Vietnam War activists, and so on. Uh, so he has uh, he was actually in office and, and worked on uh, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, which was the reform imposed in 1978 by Congress on, on NSA. So he's sort of been down this road before. And his advice to the NSA, is, as you mentioned, was to sort of get everything out there, stop the, the drip, drip, drip of revelations, since there are still thousands and thousands of documents that have not been discussed by the media, and a lot of media organizations have them now. Uh, he said, you know, sort of get it out there and, uh, and try to get this behind you. Go ahead and have the debate and decide on, on what happens from there. Uh, whether NSA is going to take that advice is, is unclear. Um, it's true that the Director of National Intelligence Office has been putting up documents online in recent um, weeks that it never would have considered putting up before this known revelations. So they're taking at least some of that advice. On the WikiLeaks tweet, I'm not sure I understood the point. I think his point is it's sort of what Bobby Inman said, just get it all out in one article. A little bit the way uh, WikiLeaks information was gotten out. I think one of the impacts of um, uh, the Snowden leaks, the documents he released to um, Laura Poitras and to Glenn Greenwald, are how slowly they're coming out in these in-depth pieces all over the world, you know, whether we're talking about Angela Merkel, it's not that they didn't have this information before, but it's just coming out. The German chancellor has caused an uproar in Germany. In fact, right now they're asking perhaps Edward Snowden to either come to Germany or somehow testify as they investigate this further. Um, you know, everything that's happened in Brazil with Dilma Rousseff not coming to the United States for a state visit because of uh, the global piece that Glenn Greenwald also co-authored. But, um, not summarizing, but doing in-depth reporting on each of these revelations. Yeah, well, um, I think, you know, to, to, to compare what, what we've done here in, in the story that ran yesterday with WikiLeaks, I think there is a difference, and, and it's a really interesting debate that's going on about journalism these days. Um, we went to uh, the NSA and the DNI's office, Director of National Intelligence Office, some time ago, with uh, I went to them with uh, many of the points that I intended to use in, in my story and essentially gave them the chance to respond um, or to make an argument that some of this would be too damaging to, to national security, would be dangerous to either individuals or, or to programs. And uh, after extensive discussions, we did take out some points, some details from the story that ran. Um, WikiLeaks, generally speaking, has has sort of put stuff out there without, uh, you know, sort of unexpurgated. Um, I have to say that from my observation, from my conversations with The Guardian, I think everybody who's gotten these documents has been somewhat selective in putting them out. That applies to Laura Poitras, Glenn Greenwald, The Guardian itself, The Washington Post. Uh, I think they, you know, I think everybody recognizes that there's a difference between um, important information the public should have, and information that's perhaps less newsworthy and could do real damage to uh, important intelligence programs that, you know, could, among other things, prevent a terrorist attack.
Uh, let me end with this question. We just have a minute. Um, uh, James Clapper, head of national intelligence, clearly lied to Congress when he says the U.S. wasn't spying on Americans. The White House is still pushing for the prosecution of Snowden, and yet um, no prosecutions of NSA officials or intelligence officials like Clapper have been discussed. Um, what about that? Well, there's clearly a, a, a big contradiction that has not been resolved between uh, the, President Obama saying that he welcomes the debate that we're now having about NSA, about Soviet surveillance domestically, overseas, uh, and the uh, prospect uh, of a long prison term for Edward Snowden if he comes back to the United States. Um, so, you, you know, it's, I think it's, uh, it's pretty clear. Um, I, I think it's fair to say that, that uh, Snowden broke the law. Um, it's also pretty clear to a lot of members of Congress that there's uh, that he started a debate that is quite important to um, to sort of the uh, the future of the intelligence agencies and to uh, American democracy. How how you sort that out, um, you know, I guess we'll find out uh, over the next uh, months and maybe even years. Scott Chain, I want to thank you very much for joining us. And, of course, um, he says, Edward Snowden says, that he was exposing uh, the fact that the U.S. government itself was breaking the law. Scott Chain is national security reporter for The New York Times. His front-page article is headlined, No Morsel Too Minuscule for All-Consuming NSA. We'll link to it at Democracy.